it says kitab al-tahara so this is the book of purification he says wa hiya irtifa' al-hadath wa zawal al-khabath which is the removal of hadath and the elimination of khabath so a hadath is a wasfun qa'imun bil badan it's a state of being something that occurs from the body which prevents that individual from prayer and various acts of worship which require purification. This is the hadith. And the khabath is uh, something which gets on the body or clothing or place of prayer or worship which prevents them from commencing the beginning, requiring them to remove that khabath. So there's these two things, al-hadith wal khabath. This is the beginning of Tahara. He goes on and he says, وَالْمِيَهُ ثَلَاثَ That water is three. طَهُورٌ وَطَاهِرٌ وَنَجِسٌ You have these three qualities. طَهُورٌ طَاهِرٌ and نَجِسٌ So we'll leave some of the words in the original Arabic language as uh, we call scientific terms, if you will. And the meaning of tahur here is, as he says, huwa al-baqi ala khilqati, tahurun fi nafsihi, mutahhirun li ghayrihi, yajuz usti'maluhu mutlaqa. It is what remains in its original nature. It is pure and purifying. It is absolutely permissible to use. So here, the tahur is essentially water which has remained in the state in which it was created, meaning it has not changed from its natural state. And it is pure within itself, and it is an agent that purifies, meaning this is the category of water which will remove the hadith and eliminate the khabath. And it is permissible to use unrestrictedly, meaning you can use it for anything including purification of the body, the clothes, the place of prayer. You can use it for drinking and eating and washing and whatever it may be that you need water for. The next category, he says, is وَالطَّاهِرُ مَا تَغَيَّرَ كَثِيرٌ مِنْ لَوْنِهِ أَوْ طَعْمِهِ أَوْ رِيحِهِ بِطَاهِرٍ وَهُوَ طَاهِرٌ فِي نَفْسِهِ غَيْرُ مُطَاهِرٍ لِغَيْرِهِ يَجُوزُ اسْتِعْمَالُهُ فِي غَيْرِ رَفْءِ حَدِثٍ وَزَوَالِ خَبَرٍ so the next category, tahir, is what is uh, greatly changed in color, taste, or odor due to a pure object. Color, taste, or odor has been changed. And the change occurred because of a pure object, something which is pure. He says, this type of water, a tahir, it is pure in and of itself, but not purifying. Meaning it will not remove a hadith and it will not eliminate a khabath. You cannot use it to make wudu and you cannot use it to clean the clothing, the body or the place of prayer to remove any filth. So he says it is permissible to use except to remove hadith or khabath. Meaning here, you can use it to drink, you can use it to cook, you can use it to uh, wash things that do not require purification. Okay, so you can see the different qualities of these two categories. The last one he says, وَالنَّجَسُ مَا تَغَيَّرَ بِنَجَاسَةٍ فِي غَيْرِ مَحَلِّ تَطْهِيرٍ وَيَحْرُمُ اسْتِعْمَالُهُ مُطْلَقَ إِلَّا لِضَرُورَةٍ So listen to this, there's some detail here. Najis, which is the last category, he says, is what has changed due to impurity, except while on the location being purified. So what that means is, if you have your water, which is tahur, the one you're going to clean yourself with, and something got on your clothes, some impurity. Okay, something got on your clothes, some type of impurity that has to be removed now. So you're going to use water to remove that impurity. And so when you begin to pour the water onto the location, it mixes with that substance and it changes 
its color, its taste, and its smell. Immediately, once it touches that impurity, it now changes those qualities. But he says here, if you listen carefully, he says, he says, ما تغير بنجاسة في غير محل تطهير Except in the place of purification. So here, it does not mean while the water is still connected to the object being purified, it has not become impure. So if by that water, even though it may change its qualities, it removes the filth, the najas of the impurity, then it has done its job. Everyone clear with that? And he says here, وَيَحْرُمُ اسْتِعْمَالُهُ مُطْلَقَ إِلَّا لِضَرُورَةٍ And it is impermissible to use in any situation except for dire need. He says here, unless in dire need. It is absolutely impermissible to use unless in dire need. And the dire need here would be if a person was choking on a morsel of food and there was nothing for them to drink for it to go down. Then they could use some of this impure water. Or if there was some fire or flame that needed to be extinguished, may Allah protect us, and this was the only thing available, then this is a barura. This is an absolute necessity. And then it can be used in that case. He says here, uh, the next portion, he says, وَالْكَثِيرُ قُلَّتَانْ فَأَكْثَرْ An abundant amount is قُلَّتَانْ This is a measure, this is a unit of measure. قُلَّتَانْ Two قُلَّة قُلَّةٌ is a measure. قُلَّتَانْ is two of these measures. He says, this is abundant. And a meager amount is lesser than that. So anything under قُلَّتَانْ And this measure is considered taqriba and not tahdida. So it's something that's roundabout, close to, and not precise and exact. He says, they are equivalent to 170.7 Damascus ratals. Another form of this is the local. So what they used to have is the qullatan, which was the prophetic uh, tradition. And then they would equate it to what was considered local at the time. And so because the sheikh here, uh, he was born in uh, Ba'labak, which is in Lebanon. Lebanon. That's why they call Al-Ba'li. His, his last uh, nasab was Al-Ba'li, Ba'labak. He moved to uh, Halab, Syria. Syria. And he also lived in Damascus for a number of years, studying in the uh, Masjid uh, Bani Umayyah under the uh, Quba. Uh, yes, Mawiyah, the Umayyad Masjid uh, Nasr, which was the place that the Hanbali, the Hanabila used to teach from. So this was the local measure, and they have a number of uh, different measures that were, uh, whenever the Hanabila, wherever they were, so there was some in Iraq, there was some in Damascus, there was some in Egypt, and they would take the units of measure and convert them into the local used standards, that way people would understand and be very comfortable with these numbers. And so it is approximately 50 U.S. gallons, approximately. And of course that is, uh, the, the measurement is... is there's a lot of difference in regards to the exact amount that it is, but this is an approximate amount, and uh, happy to receive any advice or correction for that. So he says, "Well, yesiru ma'duna huma that that which is considered meager, a meager amount is lesser than that." And then he goes on, and we'll conclude with this portion here before to the next chapter. He says, and the reason that he mentions this has to do with water. So the madhab here is that. قُلَّتَانْ This large amount of water, what is roughly 50 gallons of water or more, it does not, uh, it does not carry najasa. Meaning if some najas were to fall into it or to uh, get mixed with it, as long as it did not change those qualities, color, taste, or smell, it's still tahur. Anything lesser than that, lesser than 50 U.S. gallons, roughly, by simply bil by 
touching or, or, or mixing even the slightest majasa into that, the madhab has taken the position that it is no longer bahur. It cannot be used. So that's why he mentions this particular point here. The next point that he concludes with here, he says, وَكُلُّ إِنَاءٍ طَاهِرٍ يُبَاهُ اتِّخَاضُ وَاسْتِعْمَالُهُ غَيْرَ ذَهَبٍ وَفِضَّةٍ so he says here, every pure vessel is permissible to keep and use so long as it is not gold or silver. So first he talked about the types of water. Then he talks about the amount of water. And now he concludes with what will hold the water typically. So he says any vessel, meaning if it's a pot, if it's a, uh, a skin, if it's, if it's a tank that you have to hold your water, anything is permissible as long as it is uh, permitted it is pure and it is mubah to use to hold water he says ittikhaduhu ittikhad means to take or to possess without perhaps using it and then istimal is to actually employ that in usage as long as it is not gold or silver right so even gold and silver vessels are not permissible to keep as objects of decoration or investment or any other thing. And here, they're also not to be used to perform your wudu or any type of purification from it. And so that will conclude the introduction uh, this evening. And we'll pick up next time with al-istinja, uh, al-istijmar, which is removing, uh, removing what comes out of the body. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين وجزاكم الله خير